Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC. And in today's video, we're going to talk about three different parts of the Angora Rabbit shearing technique. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end when we cover all three of these and then you can find out the solutions to these three questions. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and press the bell, make sure to do that right now because you get notified when we release all of our videos. That's usually every Saturday and Monday, but we release videos in between as well. So the first question we have is, why is Angora rabbit shearing technique important? We also want to know, how would improving your shearing technique be useful? These might be questions that you've asked, and these might be questions that you've asked of yourself. How might it benefit you if you actually improved your shearing technique? How might it benefit your rabbit if you actually improved your shearing technique? And then perhaps one of the most important questions is the third one. What is the true cost of poor Angora rabbit shearing technique? So that's not just the cost financially, it's also the cost, for example, to your relationship with your rabbit. And so when we're thinking about Angora rabbit shearing technique, we want to think about it in a couple different ways. We want to think about it in terms of your relationship with your rabbit. So when you think about poor shearing technique, and if you were to do nothing to improve your shearing technique, there's a few things that could happen. So the first thing we look at is trust. So you have to trust your Angora rabbit, and your Angora rabbit has to trust you. When that trust is in place, you have a good shearing session. And when you improve your Angora rabbit shearing techniques and your skills shearing your rabbit, then trust is something that builds instead of deterior deteriorates. So the next is in terms of stress. Again, this is both stress to you, the stress you experience. Uh, sometimes you could even just be thinking about shearing your Angora rabbit and feeling stress, and as well as the stress that your Angora rabbit experiences by not using the correct or proper shearing techniques. So when you work on your shearing techniques, when you learn proper shearing techniques for Angora rabbits, your stress decreases and your rabbit's stress decreases. So the next. So it's important to focus on your Angora rabbit shearing techniques. It's important to improve them and there's quite a bit of cost because poor behaviors. So Maybe it's poor behaviors on your rabbit's part. Maybe your rabbit is very squirmy. Maybe it's poor technique on your part, poor behaviors on your own part. And that can result in, again, the higher stress. But it can result in, in something that's even more important. When you continue shearing your rabbit with, uh, without a proper method, without good technique, without good skills, when you continue to repeat that behavior, that behavior becomes a habit, and your habits are what you do. So repeating poor shearing techniques just simply leads to poor behaviors from both yourself and the rabbit, and that's exactly what you want to avoid. So another thing to consider in terms of your relationship with your rabbit, when you think about what's the risk of not improving my skills, what might happen if I don't improve my skills, it's just quite simply less enjoyable time together. So your rabbit is not going to be something that you enjoy, it's not going to be a little creature that you enjoy taking out your scissors and shearing. It's not going to be something that your rabbit enjoys being around you. So when the skills are lacking and the technique is lacking for Angora rabbit shearing, then the enjoyment on both parties decreases. So the relationship with your rabbit is less enjoyable altogether. And most people who get an Angora rabbit 
They don't want a less enjoyable relationship with an animal. They want a more enjoyable relationship, both for themselves and for your rabbit. So the very, the last uh, item to consider in terms of your relationship with your rabbit. So not paying attention to your shearing technique increases your chances of injury to both yourself and your rabbit. And when there's a higher chance of injury, again, the relationship with your rabbit is negative. The relationship with your rabbit suffers. So all of these things, all of these things, when you think about if you were to do nothing to improve your shearing technique and your shearing skills, all of these things are things that would pop up. So let's keep looking. So the second piece we consider when we're thinking about the why, the how, and the cost of your shearing technique skills, we think about it in terms of the actual wool from the Angora rabbit. So shearing an Angora rabbit without understanding the proper way to shear an Angora rabbit, for example, for example, the proper holds to use when shearing an Angora rabbit, it leads quite simply to more wasted wool. So the wool, if, if you don't understand how to hold the rabbit, if you don't understand how to keep the rabbit still yet safe and comfortable, if you don't understand how to hold your scissors when shearing the rabbit, or even how to prepare prior to shearing your rabbit, it results in more wasted wool. It results in more second cuts. It results in um, just a lot of things where the wool is not the quality that you want simply because of what's happening during the actual shearing session. So the next is uh, dissatisfaction with the wool that's actually cut. So the numbers of your prime wool, the wool weight, it's gonna be off. We gotta check if accurate is spelled right. Are there two R's or are there just one? It's one of the things I have to look at. But the, um, the accuracy of your wool from the wool weights. When you're keeping records of the amount of wool you get per rabbit, for example, when you're trying to figure out who to breed and you're looking back at the records of the wool shearings and you're noticing, uh, okay, I'm gonna breed this rabbit due to their prime wool that I've, I've gotten off the rabbit through this many shearings. If you're not shearing the rabbit properly, your numbers of the actual wool that are, that's coming off the rabbit that you're harvesting, the amount of wool coming off the rabbit that's prime wool is not going to be accurate. And if you're making decisions of breeding based on the wool weight and you're not using the proper shearing technique, this literally impacts the actual wool on the rabbits you're breeding because you are not going to be able to use those records to make accurate decisions for breeding for wool weight for breeding rabbits who produce more wool because your shearing method is off, your technique is off, your numbers are going to be off. And it just leads to, in terms of wool, it just it does not lead to stability in the wool of your rabbit, it leads to less stability in the wool of your rabbit. So your wool production's off. Now the final one is in terms of money. So if it's not enough to consider the problems that doing nothing and not, if you were to not learn or not do a single thing to improve your shearing technique, if you were to ignore the terms of your relationship which is with your rabbit, which is the most important, if you were to ignore the uh, wool and focus only on money, these are some things that you're gonna end up with. So, There are right tools and there are wrong tools in what you can use and what you can't use when you shear your Angora rabbit. 
So guessing at tools and guessing at which tools to use and simply trying out whatever and maybe finding this pair of scissors or maybe finding um, this sharpener or this blower. When you, when you are just guessing at the correct tools to use, you're simply wasting money because there's, there's a select sliver of tools that are the best to use for Angora rabbits. Not every single pair of scissors, for example, are, not every single pair will be good to use on Angora rabbits. So taking a guess and just buying whatever pair of scissors is on sale is not something that will actually lead to better uh, financial, a better financial situation for you. It will lead to waste. So if you take the time and you learn about what tools to use, for example, what do you do for scissors? What tools do you buy? And how do you take care of those scissors? And when do you take care of those scissors? And what do you do to take care of them? If you take the time and learn the proper techniques about Angora rabbit shearing, including tools, then you reduce the amount of money wasted on the incorrect tools. All right, this is a big one. Time. So we can spend time once. We have only 24 hours in a day. We get to spend each of those 24 hours one time. And after those 24 hours are done, we have no way of getting them back. You don't have a way of going back in time and redoing a shearing. The only thing you can do if you want to improve your shearing technique is going forward and educating yourself about the proper technique for shearing a rabbit. So then there's the following and the very last is the amount of wool that's actually lost. So we know there's going to be, up here, we know that there's going to be more wasted wool. And when you have more wasted wool, the amount of wool lost translates into money that's lost. Because something as simple as a half an inch to an inch cut that's an error, a cut in error because of not holding a rabbit properly, it results in that section of wool you just cut being completely wasted. And it's not something you can count as primal. For example, if the section is three inches long, you miss an inch of it, you now have a two inch section that is no longer primal. And that impacts the amount of money that you have because you have less wool to sell and you have less wool that if you want to spin it and make it into something or felt it or do whatever you wish with your Angora wool, you have less wool available. And that wool takes time to grow. There's only so much wool in the, in the life of an Angora rabbit that the rabbit will grow. At some point, the Angora rabbit will not be with us and then will not be with you anymore and you will not get any more of that time back for that rabbit to grow more wool. So these are all of the things to consider and probably the most important thing you can do is improve your shearing method. So watching videos, the, all the YouTube videos on this channel, the Razzle uh, Rabbit Training Yarns YouTube channel has a ton of grooming and shearing and rabbit care videos. They're free to watch. Now, if you want more information than that, there's another video option available. And if you go to RazzleDazzleRabbitry.com, you can find the uh, shearing course on the Razzle Dazzle shearing method, and that is just under a two hour course that walks you through everything and that shows you everything to improve your shearing technique so that all of these things we talked about are no longer issues that you have. If you're looking for a bit more than watching videos and taking the video course, we have options including how to shear your rabbit the Razzle Dazzle Shearing Method for Angora Rabbits. It's available in the paperback version and it's available in the ebook version. So you can go to Amazon.com or you can go to RazzleDazzleRabbitry.com for these. And one of the following tools, the last tools that we offer is the actual Angora Rabbit Shearing Record, which is also available again at Amazon.com or at uh, RazzleDazzleRabbitry.com for the ebook or the paperback. And this 
has all the different things that you you need in there and you can you know when you're trying to look at shearing and shearing your rabbit so keeping an accurate record and having something that helps you keep accurate bull records besides improving your shearing technique they all go hand in hand and it will help if you still have questions you can always feel free to send me an email at razzledazzlerabbitry at outlook.com and there are certain times in which we can do a one-on-one -on -one private video uh, tutoring course for trying to work out some of the kinks that usually go with shearing your rabbit. Thanks for watching.